Siri, welcome. Here we are. Welcome to Sam Roberts. Now it's the loneliest night of the week. Lonely Friday, and here we are to all be lonely together. It's the loneliest show on all of the internet, and I'm happy to see you all here. I hope you're as happy to see us all here. When I'm saying us, I'm not just talking about me and speaking in the third person like I'm royalty. I'm talking about American royalty here with me. Hot dog, of course. Hot dog is here. The United States' Another answer. Friday. Yes. To, who would have thought? Who, they just keep coming. They No really? matter how hard we have try, they just won't stop, but I'm happy. It's a good thing. It's good news, you know? I tell you, it's not good news, Hot Dog. It's got a lot of people worried. A lot of people are concerned. Um, Netflix put a scare into, into everybody this week. Did you see what this streamer has done? Netflix, the godfather of all streamers, the one that everybody models behind. I remember when Netflix first was like, hey, you know, when they came out, they were like, we're going to mail you these DVDs if you give us the money. And if you want, you know, for free, you can stream some movies too. And then one day they were like, well, you can keep your DVDs, but you're going to have to pay extra for the streaming. We were like, are you crazy? Little did we know this was going to be the new normal, as they say. Well, it's become uh, almost required viewing, a little less now. I guess that's the problem. Less now than ever before, but still... I think you would agree that Netflix is the top dog, but did you see Hot Dog, the scare that they put into everybody this week? Passwords. Passwords. They're trying to take your free accounts away from you. Hot Dog, I know you watch Netflix. Do you do so on the house, or are you paying for a subscription? Uh, I'm paying for a subscription. A, a lot of people are leeching off of that Okay, that's what I thought. I knew. I figured that that was the direction we were going in. Now, are the people in your circle... <laughs> did you... Yeah, yes. yeah, no, I figured you were the one paying, but I figured that you were still intimate with the situation. Um, the people that are paying, or, or not paying, leeching, as you put it so eloquently, are they yes. worried about the fact that they've maybe got a month, 60 days left of, of hot dog leeching? Can you imagine the uh, life? Can you imagine your life if you're, if you're leeching off hot dog? I mean, <laughs> what's worse? <laughs> what could be worse? Yeah, this this news is hitting is hitting us very hard. Uh, I I think I don't think the news has gotten to DR yet. No, the, the Dominican Republic. Ooh, uh, I, I, yeah, but they're in for a rude awakening. They are in for a rude awakening, especially. I mean, if the rules that they that they put up are even close. So Netflix did a upside daisy. Netflix said we made a mistake. I was only kidding. I was only kidding. It was a joke. It was a joke. That's what they said because people started freaking out, right? I mean, people went to the, the Help Center page because people have known for a while now that Netflix is going to be uh, putting the kibosh on password sharing. It's just nobody is 100% clear on exactly how they'll do it. They've said that they're looking at ways to... Uh, give you options to upgrade your subscription plans so that you can get a leech account is what they're calling it for less money. <laughs> like, so for an extra $5, you can, you can suck off of the blood of hot dog or whatever friends you have that has that account. But I still am not a hundred percent sure how they're going to make sure that it will happen. But we, we, we may be, got a hint this week and people got very, very concerned because this article pops up on the Help Center webpage. And it said that going forward, uh, you would uh, not only would you have to have a, 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 a verified home address, but that every month it said on this thing, you would verify your devices. So every you have to re-verify your devices every month. And if a device is not used within 30 days or re-verified, it gets uh, blocked off of the Netflix account. Also- Very familiar with that because YouTube TV operates in that same way. Mm. Also, they say you have to it's it's going to be tracing where you are you can't have accounts that are out of the house and everything so if your device leaves if you're traveling if you're going to a hotel and you want to take advantage of the chromecast or whatever the hotel has 
you will have to notify Netflix and get some kind of temporary passcode that will last seven days and will allow you to then stream. But if you're gonna if you're on a trip for like two weeks, I guess you'll have to re up after seven days and get a new passcode. I mean, we gotta ask him for permission, like they're my fucking daddy. Get, get out of here. Get out of here. That's exactly hot dog. That was exact. We're on the same page on this. I was sitting there going, I don't like to tell my wife when I'm leaving. I have to because we live oh, in the yeah. same house, and she'll wonder why are you not home? I'm raising these children by myself. But it's it's out of principle. It's not like it, it, I'm trying to keep secrets. It's just a matter Netflix of will also be raising your children. Apparently. They better be with these prices. <laughs> but I want to, it's like it's nobody's business unless it's your business specifically. And then my wife says, it is my business. We raise children together. And I go, touche. But I'm not going to tell the rest of my relatives when I'm leaving town. Sometimes my dad calls. He goes, uh, what time's your flight tomorrow? I go, don't worry about it. Don't you worry about it. Just understand that I'll get there when I get there, okay? Don't even, I'll let you know if I need any extras. The idea that I have to let a uh, streaming service give uh, give them a heads up when I'm leaving town is insane to me. Do you know how furious I would be? I don't even. I, hey. Uh, uh, hey, Netflix. I uh, just want to let you know uh, I'm traveling for the Royal Rumble this week. Uh, is that cool? Like, yes. I don't like to pack until like right before I have to leave. The idea that it's like, okay, I, like, because I don't think about it until it's time to do it. But I'm like, okay, got to make sure my gear is packed. Got to make sure my clothes are packed. Let me make sure I'm checked in on the airline. Let me make sure my seat's okay. Let me make sure that I tell Netflix that I'm leaving so I can still use my phone. What? Are you crazy? Next, they're going to ask why. Why are you going? You were just there. <laughs> you don't need to go back. You were just there. Yeah, that's what I mean. Huh? I mean, imagine you, hot dog. You over the summer, you go on vacation every three weeks. Imagine if yeah. after the third trip, they're like, hot dog. You really think you're entitled to that many vacations? And you're like, this is Netflix. I'm. It's Netflix, already. Alone. It's already twenty dollars a month for the premium Netflix account. Already. So the that's I, probably what I'm paying. I don't even notice. Right. So the idea that I might be paying $35 a month to a service that I have to tell them when I'm going on vacation is nuts to me. I won't do it. I can't do it. I can't, out of principle, I can't do it. The cock doesn't make me. When I, when I want to stream the cock, they're like, whenever, wherever. They're like Shakira. We're meant to be together. Let's do it. Whatever you want. HBO Max. Hey, whatever you want, dude. Ne However, Netflix goes, no, 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 no. Everybody goes. Everybody is reading this going, what is this movie phone? These are insane. I mean, movie pass? Is this movie pass with your insane non-business policies? This makes no sense. And then Netflix goes, "Oh, we took it down. We took it down. We took down the article." And everybody was like, "Why'd you take down the article?" And they were like, "It was on accident." And like, what do you mean it was on accident? And Netflix, we know, we know what you guys are planning. You guys wrote it up. You wrote no, 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 no. That wasn't for you to see. Wait, wait, wait. That wasn't for us, or that wasn't for us to see. What? What's the difference? There's a big <laughs> difference, Netflix. There's a big difference because that's what they said. They said it was a mistake. It was an oops-a-daisy. It was like when you trip and fall or something like that. No big deal. They said that that was meant for Chile, Costa Rica, and Peru. Only, <laughs> only Chile, Costa Rica, and Peru, which I guess that People in Latin American countries don't travel. Like they go, I don't know why Chile, Costa Rica, and Peru have to be guinea pigs for these policies. It doesn't seem right. Maybe it's just those three countries that are really, really, really overdoing the leeching. It's possible. And then they're going to have everything under control. It's possible. But if I'm in Chile and I'm reading that news, I'm like, well, that's twice as bad. That's twice as bad. No, we didn't mean that, North America. We didn't mean that. Just for Chile. Just for Chile. What? <laughs> yeah, I'd be pissed. I'd be furious. Yeah. That's what I would ask. It's exactly what I would ask. Kid? <laughs> Kid? So they say, and I'm I'm sitting here, my first thought is, is the problem this bad? Like, do we really need to tackle it? Because I don't see any of these other streaming services running around like chickens with their heads off 
trying to figure out how to make sure that they nickel and dime everybody. But then apparently Netflix says that there's like a hundred million people that watch Netflix without paying for it, which when they said that, I was like, oh, okay, that is a lot. That That's uh, all right. A hundred million. That's that puts a dent in that. I mean, that'd be nice if you could get a hundred million people, even if you got them to buy the cheap one, you could still get Netflix for 10 bucks. I think with ads that would it's a hundred million people. If you got them each to just get the $10 subscription, hot dog, that's a billion dollars a month. That, that These would people aren't going to get Netflix. No, though. they're not, but it would bother me. It would bother me if I said, we're having a billion dollars a month stolen from us. That's like so well, much that, money. When, when, how is it stolen? When Wall Street goes, you've made $6 billion less this year than you did last year. And I have to say, you have to understand, $12 billion of Netflix money is just people watching for free. It's not our fault. I would be panicking a little bit. I well, would. The whole point is you make separate accounts for that reason. You don't make separate accounts for yourself. Well, so okay. So you're saying that within their hundred million tally is like. So we have three accounts. I got one for me, one for the wife, so she can watch all her girl stuff. You know, I don't want it clogging up my algo. And then one for the children. There's one children's account. So you're saying you that five. Netflix, you got five accounts? What do you have? For, you're a single man. You're not even in a, you don't even have a steady girlfriend. What do you need five accounts for? One for me. Right. One for my roommate, Kyle. That's, I don't think that's how that works. Go on. <laughs> uh, uh, one for my cousin. Okay, that's. One for, one, one for my brother oh. in the Dominican Republic. Uh, all right. I don't think. And then, and then I have one that's split into two people. <laughs> <laughs> that's a share account. <laughs> My friend okay. Margaret and my other roommate Nigel share my, one account. My friend Margaret and my buddy Nigel, they share one. Well, yeah. so do you split the bill six ways? No, because I would already pay for it anyway. I got so, you, fam. Like... I got you, fam. My whole crew's eating. My whole crew is eating. <laughs> exactly. All right. I mean, so do you think it's crazy that my brother and my sister have their own accounts? If you could if you could have them join yours, why wouldn't you? I guess so. But I'd split. I make them. Account. I make them split. But but I think that that's Netflix's problem. I don't think that that service is built so like, if you get it, that means your cousin's got it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's eating, fam. Yeah, and yeah. It's baked in. It's baked in. The reason you have up to five accounts is so up to five or six people can have. I think that's access. A, to well, it. I think no. I think that's for within your household. I mean, I think even Nigel that's to me. Out of here. Nigel is a stretch, but I could see it because he at least uh -huh. Nigel's in your household. But like, I mean, your brother in the DR could, I mean, I don't think that's how Netflix is designed to work. Didn't they tweet once, uh, love is sharing your Netflix password? Who am I sharing it to? You better find uh, that. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you better find that tweet and bring it right into a court of law because my brother, you got a case. If they tweeted that, if they, they tweeted that. that, and by the way, if they tweeted that, you faxed that tweet down to Chile because they are screwing those <laughs> people over bad, bad. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, don't, but between now shit like that, fam. You are right, though. I mean, of those five people on your account, they're not re-upping if Netflix is like, no, now you all have to pay 30. They're like, we're not paying 30. No. Oh. If anything, I might leave. Out of protest? I, I might leave out of, I don't watch that much Netflix to begin with. My, my reason for staying with Netflix is just out of, uh... uh Let's be uh, honest. You know, it's to flex. You want to flex so you can you can hook your peoples up. Well, a little bit, but it's it's more of just like the I'm used to it. I Imagine it, that for... if you went into Netflix and you go, you understand the only reason I use this service is to hook up my peoples. <laughs> so if I can't hook up my peoples anymore, this is valueless. I'm not using it. I'm barely on Netflix, so I'm giving you this money just so my peoples can eat. So if my people can't eat, I'm not eating. Right. That's it. That's what your service is. They're like, no, we're a content provider. And you're like, no, 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 no. You provide the flex. That's what you're here to do. I mean, I would just jump to HBO. I mean, at this point, I'm watching more HBO stuff than I'm watching Netflix. Why isn't HBO or any of these other services this worried that they're shutting out Chile? Because they have enough money to, to burn for a couple of years. So they're still in the early baby stages. They're All still right. They're trying to entice people. That's so, right. Know, Netflix. But I mean, the the real problem with Netflix, I think, is that 
they got so successful that these unrealistic expectations came through. Like, I think that's happened with a lot of, you know, media providers during the pandemic. Like, everything, collectibles, streaming, anything that you use disposable income shot up during the pandemic because everybody was at home and depressed. So they were either watching stuff on streaming, buying things on Amazon and 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 bullshit that they didn't need, just something Podcast, to get boom. Right. Right, exactly. And it's like when podcast numbers start to dip, when streamers start to dip, when collectibles aren't valuable anymore, it's normal. But I think, you know, Netflix wanted their investors to believe like, no, 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 no. This is just what the new normal is. This is this is this is the amount of people that subscribe now. And everybody's like, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's the case. We might have just had a couple of good months there. But when you're probably trading company, it's tough to just have well, we had this good quarter, but I mean, I guess you could announce your earnings and then say, just so you know, it ain't staying like this. This is this is fun right now, but this is not. We're gonna go back down. The thing's gonna correct. Uh, that's the problem. Why can't it why does it have to be uh, an unlimited expansion for a company. Why can't he just be like, hey, we're, we plateaued. This is, I mean, they're still making money. They're not not making a profit. Yeah, they're making, so they're we're making still, a profit. Yeah. Because, yeah. I'm sorry, we can't, we can't make a bigger profit than what we're making right now. This, this is what it is. Yeah, there's why questions. Is that, why is that an issue? I don't know. I mean, with the amount of subscribers that they were growing, it was like, there's, we're going to run out of population. We're going to run out of human yes. beings. Like, there's only so many people. Netflix is out there getting in the business of trying to ban condoms and birth control just so they can get more babies so they can have more Netflix subscribers. It's the only way the company is going to continue to grow. But, you know, I, I, I think that I think that the idea that Netflix is going to start being the police, that Netflix is going to start be, start narking is not going to be good because you're going to go to the place that's not that, that's not narking, you know, especially if it's 100 million people. Because that means 100 million people, they all have accounts connected to them. So there are going to be people that are like, nah, I'm not doing this. Like, Or, you know, there was five people. They were sharing a $20 account. Now it's going to cost $30. They're like, no, nah, we're not going to split this anymore. We can split, like you just said, Hot Dog, Peacock, HBO Max, whatever it is. Because everybody's pumping out content as fast as humanly possible. I literally have a list. I haven't even started Last of Us yet. Can you believe that? I have not started Maybe. Last Maybe of so. Us. Everybody's saying how great it is. I haven't gotten a chance to start it. I got a question. How okay. is it that all of these companies uh, have to find ways to, to make a, a bigger profit than the year before and the year before, but Arizona Ice Tea has managed to be just <laughs> fucking chill for decades? It's been like Arizona Ice Tea for a dollar. It's 99 cents. It's always been 99 cents. It always will be 99 cents. Because you me they're not making a profit? I don't think Arizona iced tea was ever worth more than 12 cents, ever. <laughs> and so even with Biden inflation, they gave themselves so much runway that they're like, no, fam, we're good. <laughs> I mean, if you went into the boat, the eggs, you can't buy eggs anymore, but you can still get Arizona. 99 cents. Tall boy. It's in the can. Tall boy. It's in the can, though. Big can. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't think these companies have a reason to to hunker down and start treating us like assholes. That's right, because you go to your bodega, they still got Arizona. You just push the cat out of the way, and you can grab your can of Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, look, I'm still, I'm still watching Netflix. You know, I'm still, but I, I you know, I watch all my services. I don't know if you've seen this hot dog. This is my, uh, this is my last. Uh, Netflix uh, 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 piece that really got me uh, really got me thinking. Did you watch uh, the Kai story? It was called the yeah, the Hatchet Wielding Hitchhiker, which sounds like a sensationalized title, but it's extraordinarily accurate. It's about the uh, it's about Kai, who is uh, he was a hitchhiker, and he hit someone in the head with a hatchet, who was attacking people. And he became a hero, but more importantly than being a hero, he became a viral sensation. He became a, a, a phenomenon. I remember this well, and, and I was really attracted 
to this documentary because I felt like it was a throwback to that first decade of the 2000s when going viral was different. First of all, like it was like you you weren't going viral. Like you didn't you weren't trying to set up a YouTube channel that was getting a million views a week. You were just looking for weird shit that would just hit the zeitgeist. And if you could get something like Kai that would get, you know, 3 million views on YouTube, you were king shit for like a month. And then it would go away, but you were you were the man. Do you remember what that whole era is it Web 1.0 or is it that is that Web 2.0? I think it, I, I think it was I think it was the beginning of of Web 2.0. Web 2.0 I think is more about the the inner communication of it, the Twitter and everything. But I think really, if you want to break it down, that yeah, watching these people get famous so quick because I think the beginning of viral fame was kind of the end of Web 1.0. And that was when stuff took forever to cook. Like it traveled slowly, you know, Star Wars kid, Numa Numa kid. That stuff traveled. Months. Yes, it would be months, sometimes years. And eventually it would hit you. But you found somebody that they found out about that nine months ago and stuff like that. This was the beginning of viral fame in Web 2.0, which was it would hit and then boom, all of a sudden, like it was the beginning of you take a nap, and when you wake up, everybody's talking about the same thing. This was uh, this was Kai. This is what made Kai famous. A business trip. I, 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 I... It was a news report, and that was the other thing. You don't really see this that often anymore. But back in the olden days, if you could get a wackadoo to talk to a, a local news reporter, you had gold. And this was gold that would go through. The other thing is, right, that now... If you're internet famous, it's better than being TV famous. You're not looking to get famous on the internet so they talk about you on TV. TV hosts are hoping to get internet people to talk about them. Being internet famous is 10 times as good as being TV famous now. But then, 15 years ago, more or less, it was like, you got internet famous and then you started making the talk show rounds. You started to get on TV and that's when you got quote unquote mainstream, but that's totally changed. Um, also the entry uh, into these videos. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm these, I'm guessing like this was around 2008, 2007 or whatever. Sure. When people didn't have iPhones, sure. People didn't have a camera in their pocket. So it's a, it's a lot easier now to go viral for doing some crazy shit than it was then. Like yeah, you would have to be, uh, it would have to be a news story or, or you'd have to have a camcorder at the right place and yeah. stuff like that. You Right, right, right. Nobody was catching pizza rat back then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so this was Kai doing a report. You know, this the the uh, a man was, uh, he was trying to, well, he was trying to assault people and Kai came to their aid. I, I fucked this 14-year-old. I was like, you what? He's like, I raped this 14-year-old. He starts crying. Oh, he boy, a big hug. He's just like, fuck, 300-pound guy. I'm like, oh, shit. He must be fuckered, man. Like, what's he? He was talking about a guy he was hitchhiking with. Talking about, I didn't take him seriously at first. He comes driving down this way. He's like, you know what? I come to realize I'm Jesus Christ and I can do anything I fucking want to. And watch this, bam! And he smashed into this fucking guy right there, pinned him in between that fucking truck. And so I fucking, I hop out. I look over the guy's pin there. I mean, like freight train riders know this. Like, if you get pinned That's between right. something, do not fucking move that shit, otherwise you bleed out. Like. Motherfucker, I, I, I like that he gave himself that credit. Freight train riders know this because he's a throwback, you know? There was something romantic. I think immediately there was something romantic about this guy. This is like not like a scary homeless guy that you see on the street in New York. This is a guy with like a bandana on a stick that goes from that town to down town. Is luck. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And he goes from town to town with a bandana on a stick and a story to tell, jumps on the back of a freight train, and and heads off to to wherever his next journey is. Everybody that's ever been then uh, hated their life, wanted to get out of where they're working, wanted to escape all their troubles and woes. Anybody who's ever run through the six with their woes, they dreamed of being somebody as as carefree and adventurous as Young Kai is here.
I ran in, I grabbed the keys, he's fucking sitting there like nothing even happened. And like fucking like, man, if he had started driving that car around again, man, there would have been a hell of a lot of bodies around here. Fucking, I hop on out, and so I grabbed the bag, I threw it over by that pole right there, and then fucking Buddy gets out, and these two women are trying to help him. He runs up and he grabs one of them, man. Like a guy Whoa. that big can snap a woman's neck like a pencil stick. So I fucking ran up behind him with a hatchet, smash, smash, smash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of that is, yeah. It's iconic. Classic. It's iconic. Everybody, even if you don't remember the story, and I, I remember, smash, smash, smash. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. When and I saw the title on Netflix. Right. I, and I saw his face. I didn't really remember. And then as soon as you hear that quote, I go, like, okay, I'll click on this. I, yeah, I know. I, I remember exactly. Yeah, tell me the story here. And it's dark, man. It's, it's, it's a dark story, okay? He's in jail now, Kai is. He's serving, I don't know, 50-something years because he killed a guy, uh, which he says was in self-defense. Uh, he was, you know, just through his journeys and, and uh, he was being assaulted by the guy. He uh, came, he was being drugged. When he came to, he had to defend himself. He ended up killing the guy. The cop said, I didn't see any self-defense wounds. I don't believe you, Kai the Hitchhiker. And they locked him up. And it's very interesting. Very interesting. Because look, as it turns out, Kai has clearly, I mean, no matter whether you want to believe him or not, clearly this guy has suffered trauma and mentally needs some help. Mentally needs some care, right? He's he's kind of, he's a little out to lunch, you know, God bless him. But it was very interesting because when he was telling the story of hitting a man in the head with the hatchet, and then people would go, you never believe it. The guy who was hitting the man in the head with a hatchet is a little unpredictable. <laughs> so, no, because when he was hitting a villain in the head with a hatchet, it was like, oh, what a great guy. Nobody stopped to ask, hey, where'd you get the hatchet? Hey, why are you walking around with a hatchet everywhere? If somebody, like, yeah. the guy who went into the McDonald's with a hatchet, my first question is, who has a hatchet in an urban <laughs> area? Why would you ever... Need a hatchet. I don't understand it. I guess in case you're driving with somebody and they think they're Jesus. But I had a machete at my uh, at my parents' place. So it's not people just have unique weapons. Just in case you got a robber, there was a machete. Yeah, and I once took it out uh, for Halloween and just wrapped it around when I was a kid. Yeah, that's uh, you were again not cared for, neglected. Neglected is the word that I was looking for <laughs> as a child. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. But I'd ask, hey. What's that little kid doing with that machete? That's crazy. That's crazy. They go, no, 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 no. It's a, it's a fun viral story. It's a tiny child with a machete. I go, no, no, no. It's crazy. There's something wrong with this. This isn't the Very way it should machete. be. Very large machete. But it's interesting because as you're watching this thing, right? There's, a, there's a, there's a. It's such a good story of what we kind of do and what fame is and why you, you shouldn't put people on every TV channel unless they sign up for it and they're ready and they know what they're doing. Because all of a sudden it goes from, hey, it's our friend who hit the man in the head with a hatchet. Isn't he the greatest thing ever? And everyone went, yes, he is. And then there's reports that he killed a man. And then they go on a different man, not the head guy. He didn't kill the guy that he hit in the head with a hatchet. There's reports that he killed this man in New Jersey. And the cops go, from what we know, based on the old videos, he's armed and extremely dangerous. And it's like, <laughs> you mean from the hatchet? He he had that hatchet the whole time. What do you mean? Now he's dangerous. Now, <laughs> now, yeah, he's, now he's a villain. Because when he was on Jimmy Kimmel, he still was the hatchet guy. No, he only, he, guy. he only hit bad guys with the hatchet then. <laughs> now he hits good guys. And they show, like, they, they interview... Uh, they talk to the news reporter, right? This guy, you could, you could, uh, you could see his his hand is holding the microphone. This guy was very protective over Kai, right? Because he's the only one who interviewed Kai. He says, and and other news reporters tried to interview him, but Kai said, "No, I've said my piece," and he split. And so then, when everybody wanted a piece of Kai, because he's the new viral sensation, they start reaching out to this reporter, and this reporter's like, "No, gee, mm mm." 
You're going to have to pay quite a bit of money. Like he, he's like, no, 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 no. I know what I've found here. And so the reporter goes like, I've got information on where he is and I've got a phone number and I'm not sharing it with nobody. He became his agent. He did. And it's like, that's kind of gross, right? Like that's kind of a gross thing to do. And he's like, I wanted to talk to Kai about all these opportunities he had. And I go, yeah, but did you really think all these opportunities we had? Because it's kind of gross what you're doing right now. It's kind of disgusting. <laughs> but uh, 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 so he ends up on like uh, Jimmy Kimmel and they interview the guy whose whole job it was at Jimmy Kimmel to find Internet people because there were just always Internet people like this guy popping up. And Jimmy Kimmel was for a while. He was the king of having these viral Internet people on his talk show. And so they interview the guy that, that that had to go find him. And he's like, we needed to get him. We needed to get him. And the cops were after him. We brought him to the studio. And I mean, it really is this story of, oh, my God, everybody's talking about this guy. And you look at his face. Like, this is the classic. It, he's, he's, he's a handsome young kid. This is the face of a fixer-upper. Every young lady watching YouTube is sitting there going, you know what? If I just gave him a chance, if I just gave him what he needed, if I just took care of him, he'd be a great guy. He'd he's be a, a provider. He's a, har he's a harmless, charismatic stoner. Right, exactly. He's this, he, That's all he is. He's like Jeff Spicoli. No, he's Jeff Spicoli with a hatchet. <laughs> like, imagine if in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Mr. Hand was like, you, I'm not going to pass you. And then Jeff Spicoli hit him in the head with a hatchet. That'd be a horror movie. And Jeff Spicoli would be the villain, you see. You're forgetting it because there's no footage of the hatchet part. So people Depends are- Depends on how he hit him with the hatchet. Was it like this? Was it like smash, smash, smash? It was. So then you can probably get away with it. It's kind of cool. <laughs> it's kinda, yeah. Right. <laughs> But yeah, so now he's in jail. He got a, a minute he, he got a little bit of money. He went out and got a face tattoo. He's going around. He got picked up by some dude in New York City, bought him Italian food, brought him back to his place. And who knows what happened? The people who are on Kai's side say that this guy drugged him and took advantage of him. Other people will tell you that, uh, that you know, Kai went back there voluntarily and then he left and then he came back voluntarily. Who knows what was going on? But something went down and Kai killed the guy. I mean, obviously, there was some kind of uh, uh, shenanigans going on. The only question to me is, did the guy drug him or not? Did the guy pick him up and say, I'll give you, you know, 100 bucks if, you know, we live out some fantasies. I'm a guy in the suburbs who's never gotten to do this. And Kai said, OK, and then flipped out because he's got past trauma. Or was he actually drugged? You know, the courts decided that he wasn't drugged, I guess, or whatever. I think there was some form of exploitation going on there had to be right but but is it something that kai knew he like did he give permission or not right right but even, even even if it's like agreed upon like if you're paying a homeless person a hundred dollars or something that's it's, still exploiting them. it's gross it's gross but the yeah. whole thing's gross right but yeah. it did it did leave me thinking this i do think right i because they're always trying to revive shows and i think i'm like paramount plus or something like vh1 is trying to revive behind the music. But nobody cares about pop stars anymore, and they all have the same story. Like, pop stars now, they come out with their documentaries, and I don't even watch them anymore because every single one is exactly the same. Exactly. They were struggling, and they were hustling, and they just loved music. And then one day, they finally found somebody, and then they made them a star, and now they're in arenas. And you're like, oh, my God, what a great story. But you're like... All these pop stars became famous like before they were 20. Like how much did they really struggle? There wasn't even that much time. Yeah, you don't understand, dude. 15 to 17 was rough. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I posted YouTube videos for six months. It was crazy. Oh, six months. Wow, that's nuts. But like, I don't think anybody's interested in that story anymore because they've heard it a thousand times. And they're not, rock star stories just aren't rock star stories anymore. But the same way you saw this picture and went, oh, yeah, let me click on this. I feel like there's a whole generation of viral stars that if you're going to do a behind-the-music type series, 
this is the series that you do. And uh, there have been YouTube, like, where are they now type, you know, videos Gosh about. Point oh. Sure. Web redemption. Sure, or a web redemption. But web redemptions, more often than not, I felt like were not a look back on as much as it's, we found this guy, here he is today. I'm talking about a behind the music style story where you can see this person as they were before they were viral famous. And then when they got viral famous, what exactly happened and what has life been like since then? Because it wasn't just Kai in that era, right? Like, like this guy to me, Charles Ramsey. Do you remember Charles Ramsey hot dog? The face, I remember the face, but I don't remember the video. He was the one who said, dead giveaway. He was the, uh, he, yeah. song. <laughs> and that's the <laughs> other thing. This is the era when if you wanted to leech off the fame, you just did like a cool remix of whatever funny quote they had. And then that video would become like super viral and would expand and expand and expand. But to me, this is the guy who like uh, the girls got kidnapped and they were in the house and they were missing for all this time. There was like a house of horrors in a neighborhood and nobody knew. And then the girls escaped the house and Charles Ramsey was on the news giving a report and said, uh, uh, I said what happened, but he just did it in such a charismatic and hilarious way that everybody was obsessed with him. I would love to know who he was before, how the fame hit him and what he did after. He was the one who said, uh, you know, something's wrong when a young white girl runs into a black man's arms. Dead giveaway. <laughs> and he's just he's so charming. He's so charming that he says this on the news, you know? Like, what about, I don't have his picture here, but what about the golden voice Ted Williams? Remember the homeless guy? I was just going to, I was going to mention him. You yeah, wouldn't I, watch. That's why I'm worried. If, you, if they said, here's the Kai documentary, next week, 90-minute episode about Ted Williams, golden voice homeless man. You're not watching? I'll say Netflix. Maybe I'll re-up. What about this guy? Antoine Dodson. Now, Antoine, he extended, you know, he got famous. Uh, you remember Antoine Dodson, right? Uh, uh, um, this is hide your kids, hide your wife. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. See, sometimes you just need the quote, no problem. <laughs> but Antoine popped up in the height of uh, ringtone mania. Remember when ringtone mania was going on? So he was able to make money off ringtones. I believe that he did like Dancing with the Stars or one of those shows. What? Yeah, I think so. But I think like watching his story on this behind the viral video series, super well produced, talk to all the, you know, put money into this thing, make it like VH1 used to do it. But I'd love to see where Hide Your Kids, Hide Your Wife is. Wouldn't you? Yeah. How about this kid? Hot dog, do you remember this kid? I can't see. Three words for you. I, oh, okay. There go you ahead. go. I like turtles. I like turtles. I like turtles. And it's and a, Darby Allen. We know where he is. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> he won the AEW TNT Championship. <laughs> <laughs> the master of the coffin drop somehow became friends with Tony Hawk. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> but I'd like to hear the journey. How did young Darby Allen go from I like turtles to being an AEW superstar? No, but wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't you like to see this is another one that like local news report popped off and then boom, he was everywhere. I like turtles. He was at a local fair. He had his weird zombie face paint on. And the news reporter said like, uh, what's brought you to the fair today? And he just said, I like turtles. <laughs> and it just, it just went everywhere. Now I'm going to go for a wild prediction here. I think that this video clip probably ruined this young man's life. I think that he's yeah. tortured. Can you imagine being I like turtles kid for the rest of your life? You will never do anything that matches this. Everywhere you go, people are going to be shouting that at you. You go to college, you're going to look different, obviously, but somebody's bound to find out. Maybe you're drinking at a party. You tell your buddy, I, I got something I want to admit to you. I'm the I like turtles kid. No, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm the I like turtles kid. Say the line, say the line. You have... 12 hours before the entire campus knows you're the I like turtles kid <laughs> and hot dog. You're a nice guy, but you see him 
walking down the quad, you're not shouting, I like turtles at him? Of course I am. Of course you are. You have to. It's your duty. You have to. We know what Cash Me Outside is. Oh, oh, that's another one. You remember him? tra la 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 tra la 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 I mean, tra la 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 this is, this is the man. I mean, he's a trolling icon, you know? <laughs> I, I want to know the, the whole story behind this. Give it to me in a complete package. Even David after dentist. Remember David after dentist hot dog? Fucking zooted. Yeah. This is another one who I'm pretty sure his life, I mean, his life would have had to have been ruined after this. Like... Maybe he just went down the path of drugs. Well, can you, but would you imagine if you're a little kid, you're on drugs <laughs> and you're talking crazy. Little kids already talk crazy. They got these wacky imaginations. But now he's on drugs. His imagination is even wilder. And his parents are like, let's video this. Then they put it on the internet. Then the entire world sees it. And now everybody just wants to get you on drugs so you could talk your crazy shit again like when you were a kid? You can't. You can't. You can't deal with that. That's, I, I, I want to hear about that pain. I want to hear about the pain of being David after dentist in real life because that's what we do, hot dog. This is why my behind the music of viral stars would be such a hit because we take these people, whether it's Kai the Hitchhiker, whether it's David after dentist, whether it's Trollolololo, and we put their entire existences into these 30-second internet clips that they can't escape from. It's this little box, and no matter what they do, they will always be that person. How does it, it's been long enough now. We've gone through a generation. How does one survive that? What about angry saxophone guy in New York City? Remember that guy? What's he doing? Exactly. What's he doing? What's he doing? I mean, gonna... I mean, we're lucky. We are lucky, hot dog. You know why? Why? We know what this guy's doing. <laughs> huh? We know exactly. What? We know exactly what this guy's doing. Of course, Tay Zande had the huge hit with Chocolate Rain. Was the song of the summer. Made everybody on the internet go crazy. <laughs> And now he's on Sam Roberts now under the assumed alias of hot dog. That's what viral fame will do to somebody. It'll make you go. Everybody knew Tay name, but he tried to have a whole recording career. He kept pumping out songs. People lost interest. So what does he do? He goes under the alias of hot dog. He puts on a beanie and it puts a little weight on his chest. And now he's on Sam Roberts now. I changed my voice a little bit, just oh, you now. No, but put those kinda... put those giant dentures in, <laughs> <laughs> and boom! I got an idea. Boom! I, I, I'll, I, I got a Netflix executive idea. Okay. Get all these people. Right. You're, I like your idea. Right. But I feel like Netflix at this point is going to say, "Look, that's a high enough budget that I don't think we can do." But, but what if we get all of them and put them in a house oh. together? Okay. <laughs> I'm not doing surreal life with these poor damaged people. <laughs> Why not? It's, cheap, it's on a budget. Great. They're all, all, all and and let me guess, we're gonna we're gonna use that same house that they used for every single show. Surreal life, Brett Michaels life, Flavor Flav's life, I love New York life, every life. Yeah. I think I think Imagine New York Chuck it, the they, they all a, they, they all use the same house. Imagine Chuck and the Rain guy getting into fisticuffs with someone with like a hot dog. Uh, I'm not I like let, turtles, kid. Hot dog, you're, you'd get hatcheted in the head in that house. <laughs> I can't let that happen. There's going to be violence. It's going to be like slap fight house. We can't do it. We can't. I think it's a great idea. But I would be there for the reunion special. You know, now they do that with all the reality shows. So you do, mm -hmm. you do behind the music viral stars, one app for each person. And then the last episode is all of them in a room talking to like, I don't know, you know, maybe like uh, Malcolm Jamal Warner or something. I don't know. Just somebody who'd be a good host. I think he'd be a good host. You know, oh, you know, he'd be a great host. Frankie Muniz. Frankie Muniz. Yeah, Frankie Muniz. TV's Malcolm in the middle. Because people would be wondering Why? what. Well, because people would be wondering what happened to him, too.
That's a good point. You know, That's a good idea. You know, I like I'm, I'm tuning down. in because like the first 45 would be Frankie talking to all the people. And then that last 15 is all the people going, what about you, Frankie? What's the deal with you? <laughs> what you been up to? What you been doing, Frankie Munez? I've seen your dad on Breaking Bad. What have you been doing? <laughs> you know? I like that. I'd be down for it. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a really good idea. Um, if we go, if we go like a, a survivor challenge way, I mean, uh, I don't. You're, again, you're going <laughs> off the ranch here, but go on. Hold on, wait, listen to this. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Where do we go? Where do we go? Web 1.0 <laughs> versus Web 2.0. All right, you have my, you had my curiosity. Now you have my attention. So yeah, what do we get? What do we get? The IHOP lady or, or or Waffle House lady in there uh, with the new viral stars against the old viral stars or what if we get commercial icons versus viral stars so you have like you know in the american gladiators dual sticks right you have catch me outside how about that versus wendy the snapple lady and they're going for it you know <laughs> well, the progressive girl they're gonna, uh, flow it's flow versus i like turtles <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I think I think there's all right. I think there is some potential there. And then creative juices flow. And then somehow Dr. Ian Smith comes in and analyzes everybody. Yeah. You know, like on like on uh like on on Fit Camp or whatever the celebrity uh, fat squad or whatever the show is called. I don't know. This um, is how we prevent Netflix from from having to do all that bullshit policy. Hey man, Netflix, we're for hire, okay? This is the Not Sam Collective that comes to you and goes, I will, hot dogs, I'm Vince McMahon, hot dogs like my Vince Russo. He'll come up with some wild shit. I'll re reel him in, okay? <laughs> Don't worry about it. He'll, he'll say some crazy shit, but I'll reel him in, and within the crazy shit, you'll find that there's gold nuggets in there. Nuggets in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, you let hot dog go off for a while. Go off, King. That's what I always say. Go off, King. And then I'll figure out where, I'll reel them in and figure out where the nuggets are. We'll be happy. It'll be great. Um, hey, speaking of uh, documentaries, one of the uh, goat documentaries, I don't know if you've ever seen this one, Hot Dog. It's not on Netflix. I don't know where you could find it right now. But uh, King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters. This documentary, I want to say, came out in the mid, maybe like 2004 five ish 2006 maybe but like you know early 2000s do you have you seen this hot dog do you remember it never heard of it okay it's fantastic it's literally up there my here's my top three documentaries of all time beyond the mat hitman heart wrestling with shadows king of kong a fistful of quarters top three right there no particular order those are my top three and they're incredibly quotable all three of them and have scenes that you'll remember forever so king of kong is about billy mitchell here now i've gotten to know billy mitchell a little bit because back in the back in the day when i was doing the special delivery show with Eastside dave on sirius billy mitchell ended up coming in to do the show so we got to know him a little bit i think dave still has a relationship with him i haven't talked to him in a while but billy mitchell is the villain of this documentary and a gentleman named Steve Wiebe, who's an everyman, he's the hero. See, Steve Wiebe is a guy who never really amounted to much, has a, a, a very average life, not a failure by any stretch of the imagination, but just not anybody that's ever done anything overly remarkable. He's got a typical family, he's got a typical job, and what he likes to do is he likes to go into the garage and he likes to play on his Donkey Kong machine. And one day, he, he videos his screen and he hits the world record. He gets the world record. This happened in like 2003, 2004. Hits the world record for his Donkey Kong score. And all of a sudden, Billy Mitchell, who has been, he's video game player of the century, He's been one of the top scorers forever. He shows up and he goes, oh, did he just beat my score? Because I forgot I have this video here and I just beat his score. And people are like, what? And he's like, yes, I did. And now where this gets villainous is they portray Billy Mitchell. 
as being somebody who's extremely well connected within this video game and video game scoring world. This place called Twin Galaxies that is an arcade, but also is the record keeping body is the one that keeps all these scores. But at the time, Billy Mitchell seems pretty networked into Twin Galaxies. He's got a, ma a mafia around him. He's got an army. He's like Elvis had the Memphis Mafia. Billy Mitchell's has the Twin Galaxies goons. I don't know exactly what they're called, <laughs> but he's got them. You know, they're on his side. And and so what you're seeing is people going, well, there's a glitch in the videotape. There's stuff that just doesn't appear to be legit. And Billy cannot replicate the score in front of anyone. He can't replicate the score in front of people. Does he get close to it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's legitimately great, but he can't get that record score. And Steve Wiebe shows up trying to get the score. And the whole time he's playing, like, Billy Mitchell's friends are over his shoulder going like, oh, you're looking pretty good. Things are getting pretty close, huh? Things are getting pretty close. Like, get away, get away, get away. <laughs> Things are getting pretty close, huh? But so uh, this doc comes out, and it really, the whole world becomes interested in this weird uh, video game Donkey Kong record subculture, right? And off and on, They've been followed for the last, you know, almost 20 years at this point since the doc came out by a, a much wider audience who became familiar because a lot of people saw this documentary. Um, and uh, uh, Billy did end up achieving the record for both Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. Then in... Recently. Or, or, no, for or that, back. for that. Steve oh, Wiebe okay. never beat his new score, and they did keep his old score. In 2007, Billy went to the FAMB convention, which is like a Florida something mortgage brokers convention, and there was a booth that set up like 80s mania. And Billy played Donkey Kong, and he had a VCR connected to the machine. That's how they record the scores. And uh, he had a Twin Galaxies uh, referee there, I believe, named by Todd Roger, named Todd Rogers. It was 2007, I want to say. And he got the record again. He got a higher record. And he sent the videotape in. And he said, I got it. And I got a couple witnesses here. One of them is Todd Rogers and a couple other people. Now, again... All we really have is these videotapes. Well, mm -hmm. Twin Galaxies ends up opening up a complaints department a couple of years after and saying, if you don't buy one of these scores, you can open up a complaint and we'll deal with it. And immediately people did for Billy Mitchell because there's been a lot of people suspicious of Billy Mitchell's activities for a long time. And apparently Twin Galaxies decided to wipe out Billy's records. He had the records for Donkey Kong oh. and Donkey Kong Jr., Twin Galaxies wipes him out, right? And Billy Mitchell, because here's what Twin Galaxies says. new They have new owners. They have new people in charge. They look at these tapes, and they said that the gameplay found on the VHS tapes could not have come from an arcade machine. The graphics are off. The colors are off, whatever it is. They said this must have come from an emulator, I believe is what they said. And so we're not counting these scores anymore. So, Billy, your scores are getting wiped off, and you're banned. And Billy sued. Billy is litigious. Billy sued Twin Galaxies. And so since then, I've been following this YouTuber named Carl Jobst. Carl Jobst has been following this. He's a very entertaining YouTuber, and he's been following this very, very closely to the point where Billy Mitchell has sued Carl Jobst a couple of times now. Carl doesn't, <laughs> Carl doesn't give a fuck. Okay, he does not. But Billy has sued Carl Jobst, uh, Carl says, a couple of times. There's a couple of videos he's put out going, yep, Billy Mitchell sued me again. 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 But the lawsuit's going forward. This was a few years ago that he filed the suit, and the lawsuit is going forward, okay? So Billy uh, says that the tapes, first of all, he says the tapes are real. Second of all, these Donkey Kong tapes shouldn't even matter because I've got witnesses. So even if you think right. the, even if you think the tapes are BS, I've got witnesses that saw me win this game at the FAMB convention 
And that's all that matters. So there are sleuths, sleuths that have been sitting there painstakingly trying to find evidence. Nobody has any actual video or, or photographs from this FAMB convention. He said, there's a camera, he says, I was videoed playing the game. Nobody has the tape of him. Nobody's got any footage of him playing. Nobody's got any photographs of him playing. Until, until, well, the people, there's like four people, four or five people that are, are witnesses. One of them is this referee, uh, Todd Rogers. Now, Todd Rogers, mm -hmm. apparently, after this, was also banned by Twin Galaxies for uh, suspicious game scores and is a friend of Billy Mitchell. Another one is apparently one of their girlfriends. Like, like they, my my man Carl, okay. my man Carl yeah. Jopes went through all of the witnesses, and they either didn't see, they just heard about it, or the ones that see have enough there to make them suspicious. That it's like, okay, we need we need better proof. So we go, well, well, where's the evidence that you were at this convention? And somebody found it. Somebody found the evidence, hot dog. And these photographs came out. This is it. This is it, hot dog. This badass photo right here. That's Todd Rogers in the referee shirt. And that's Billy Mitchell. You can see right there, it says Florida Association of Mortgage Brokers at this convention. Mm -hmm. There's the Donkey Kong machine. There's the VCR. And if you right. look over uh, Rogers, uh, Todd Rogers' shoulder... You can see the camcorder, and you're like, okay, this all seems to be checking out. Houston, we have a problem, because hot dog, you may think, I see you looking at this photo, and you think this photo is good news for Billy Mitchell, don't you? Sure. You're an ignorant fool, hot dog. <laughs> you're wrong. You idiot, idiot, idiot. This is a terrible photo for Billy Mitchell. Want to know why? Why? This right here, it's a long red joystick. Here's the okay. problem. Here's the problem. Everybody knows original Donkey Kong machines had short black joysticks, you stupid son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Yes, yes. And the, the rules state that the score must be played on an original Donkey Kong machine with original parts. And I seen in a video that there ain't no original Donkey Kong machines with that goddamn part on it. That red joystick is the smoking gun. There is no way they're saying this could this guy Carl Job said it. Carl Job said that Billy can't win the lawsuit now because the red joystick means that it's not original. Now, why does this matter? Who cares if it's a different color? It's more than a different color, hot dog. Number one, it's a taller joystick, which some people would say could be a hindrance to a to an experienced Donkey Kong player. That the short joystick is better. This is not this is not ideal. However, regardless, it's still not original. Here's the real problem. If we look closely, hot dog, the original Donkey Kong machine had the short black joystick. It moved in four dimensions. Up, down, right, mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. That red joystick. Don't, fu don't fucking tell me, Sam. That appears to be an eight-way joystick. Damn it. There's goddamn diagonals on that joystick is what it appears to be. I seen it in a video. Where is the integrity of this machine? The machine is fine. The problem may be with the player. You ever heard the expression, don't hate the player, hate the game? <laughs> put, that, the machine. put that thing down, flip it, and reverse it. <laughs> <laughs> hate the player. Yes, apparently. How can, how can an experienced world record holder like this man? Billy uh, Mitchell, uh, that's the greatest video game player of the century. Last century. How can he fumble? How can he fumble like this? These seems like, like easy, extremely noticeable things here's where it gets complicated hot dog here's where it's a real problem for him they said look there's nothing wrong with the machine 
the same machine that Billy Mitchell got at his Mortgage Brokers Association score, that score that he got in 2007, that's the same machine that he used to get the King of Kong score where he beat Steve Wiebe. You know what that means? They both, they both had the wrong joystick. That means we got to wipe out both scores. If you wipe out one score, if it's true, if it's true what's being said, and we have to wipe out this score because there's a red joystick that goes eight ways instead of four ways, then we got to wipe out the OG King of Kong score too, which means we find out almost 20 years after the movie came out, Steve Wiebe got fucked. <laughs> okay. Well, how? What are there like two regular two machines that actually fit that criteria? Well, no. Point? From what I'm understanding, and I've done my research, I like I deep dive on this. <laughs> of course, of course, I'm a responsible person. From my understanding, is you can use original parts if you have to replace a joystick. You can replace a joystick with an original part. It just can't be tampered with in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. This has or been tampered with. Our, than our voting machines. That's, huh? Well, don't get me political on this. because I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hot dog. Eight-way joystick. Can you believe it? Did you see that one coming? No, nah, the, the diagonal bullshit is out of line. Come on. Come on. This, this, this came out, what, 1980-something? Came out in the 80s, right? early 80s, dude. Early 80s. Maybe even before that. Then? I think early 80s. No, there was no diagonal. There was no, no diagonal on Donkey Kong. And so Billy Mitchell's in a lot of trouble. He's in a lot of trouble. And I'm, look, I think Billy Mitchell's going to back himself into a corner where, number one, he's going to have to drop his lawsuit. Number two, he's not going to have those scores. But most importantly, number three, that son of a bitch is going to have to get in front of a real Donkey Kong machine and show the world what he can do. Well, I'm he's banned. Well, I can't do it at Twin Galaxies, that's for sure. He's got to say sh- unban him. Okay. Give him the give give him a reasonable chance to to write. I mean, because he keeps obviously- if he's if he's done this more than once though, if he's done this more than once, you can't keep giving people second camera? chance after second chance after second chance. This is it. You get the camera. I mean, no, no more witness bullshit. No more videotapes. You get a crew there. You have this one-on-one confrontation. Let's settle the score. Here's the original parts. Let's figure it out who the best in the world is. Yeah. You need me to film it? I will film it. You will do that? I will do it. That's sick. I think we got to do it. We got to do it pro wrestling style. You are banned. On, it's co- title versus career. That's all. <laughs> We got to go title versus career on this. We got to go. We got to go WrestleMania 26 on this. We have to go streak versus career. It's the only way. And we got to play uh, the remix to running up the hill in the, in the, in the, in the video, in the, in, because, we gotta, it, there's gotta be enough videotapes to make a dope package. If you give me not the Kate Bush, stranger things version, but the dude version of running up the hill that they had at WrestleMania 26. Awesome. I've got enough footage on the internet and with King of Kong that I will get with Adam Panucci and we will make a sick video because <laughs> Adam Panucci is a God. Okay. This is how we settle it. We'll do it. We'll do it. Sick Adam Panucci reference on my part, by the way. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you're right. Hot dog. We got to go streak versus career record versus career. Billy's got one day and you know, He'd go, well, you know, I can't guarantee that this will happen in one game. Like, people play all their lives. It's like tough titties. That's what I would tell him. I usually wouldn't use that type of language, but i go, tough titties, Billy. Like, practice, practice, practice. We'll get you a legit machine. You show us what you can do. You got one shot, one opportunity, one moment to seize everything you ever wanted. Now, are you going to capture it? Or just let it slip. <laughs> That's deep, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Get those palms powdered up because they're going to be sweaty. Okay. 
There's vomit there's on my super, American the, the super vomit on my American tie already. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the Super Bowl of Donkey Kong Jr. You think he should just go for the junior record? He shouldn't go for the Donkey Kong. Just, <laughs> just try. To, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by getting back my Donkey Kong Junior record. Let's get that straight. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know where his Donkey Kong Junior record stand. To tell you the truth, that yeah, feels I mean, who's like the record holder right now. If uh, both of them got stripped down. I don't know. Donkey Shut Kong Junior feels like my son could be the record holder on that. <laughs> like, doesn't it? <laughs> That's like, all right, you go play Donkey Kong Junior. I'll play real Donkey Kong uh all right guys uh listen you want to be a part of tonight's show you know how it works super chat in every super chat gets acknowledged here on sam roberts now it's a grand tradition it's the way we do things i want to tell you all that if you want to come see the not sam wrestling experience live we're taking the live show on the road we're going to los angeles california for not sam a mania at the world-famous Comedy Store, March 29th. That's a Wednesday at 8 p.m. Come one, come all. Well, you can't come all. You got to buy tickets. If you go to NotSamLive.com right now, you'll be able to get tickets to Not Sam Mania at the Comedy Store in Los Angeles, California, Wednesday, March 29th at 8 p.m. We're going to have uh, special guests galore. And we just got Hot Dog Today. I'll probably make the announcement on Monday. I'll tell you today offline. I And I normally, like, I'm a shill, but we got a sponsor that I'm very excited about. Oh, I'm, okay. Yeah, and that's a weird thing to be excited about, but it's a dope-ass sponsor. Like, it's one of okay. those sponsors that when I throw the logo, and you know I'm protective about my logo. I don't want to just be associated with anybody. I, I was a big thing for me to get... The Not Sam Wrestling and the Comedy Store logo together, I said, that's a bomb-ass look. That's a good, like, that's a look I love. I found another logo to throw in with that thing, and uh, it's also going to provide, I think, for some good content at the live show. So that announcement is coming this week, uh, but get your tickets, NotSamLive.com. Hot Dog, I hope you got your ticket so you can get in. Huh? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it's going to be a it's Mountain Dew. Hot dog, ah, it's not that far off. Hot dog is, uh, <laughs> hot dog is doing a meet and greet, by the way. So if you guys have been anxious to meet hot dog, he'll be signing eight by tens for $15 a pop. So you're going to uh, have me sitting there like Virgil? A hundred. Oh, I wasn't going to, but let's just say oh my God. wrestling superstar hot dog signs are a thousand. Okay. Yeah. We Okay. Let me, uh, <laughs> Get out the old, nope, this is the idea pad, too. This is the important one. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. With the same, the same banner, too. Yep, with it's the gonna stars. Be, it's going to be Hot Dog and Sam Roberts, but Sam isn't there. Oh, yeah, wrestling. <laughs> or it might be not Sam Superstar, Hot Dog. <laughs> I'm writing that down. You're getting your own oh, table. God. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> if you want a picture at the... Not Sam Superstar hot dog uh, table. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be so embarrassing. Yeah, you can get you can uh, you can get it done. It'll be great. Uh, NotSamLive.com is the place to go for tickets to that event. Um, and like all events, look, we're gonna videotape everything. But hot dog, you remember the when we were at Caroline's and uh, it took us quite a while because of how much we had to cut out of that video. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So. The live experience is going to be important. There will not be any live stream of this because, eh, quite, frank, quite frankly, I don't it think anybody happened, involved. Uh, it was happening at Arizona and Phoenix. Phoenix, we had to cut out a lot. Phoenix, we had to cut out a lot. Yeah. Well, people imbibed, and we did have to, yeah. yeah. We did the have to. The liquor was flowing. Yeah. As a, as a matter of fact, if I remember properly in Phoenix, not only uh, did we have to cut out a bunch of stuff, but conveniently, we were able to use the tape as evidence to the timing of Corey Graves' separation so that people could stop spreading their rumors. Yes. <laughs> it's a fun time, dude. Not Sam Wrestling Live. This is Not Sam Mania. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, go to NotSamLive.com for all of that. Right now, if you'd like to uh, help fund uh, Not Sam Mania, you can super chat in, and every super chat uh, will get acknowledged here on Sam Roberts. Now, Six Crow, my guy, my man, my dog, 
Six Crow says, welcome back. I appreciate that very much, Six Crow. I missed you guys last week. We were in San Antonio collecting content. By the way, all that content is up on the Not Sam Wrestling YouTube channel. If you go over there, uh, you can find it. We just uploaded uh, the gameplay video of 2K23, a uh, bunch of gameplay in that. I'm thinking about uploading some full matches from 2K23. The Royal Rumble and the hey, War people, Games people match. Are, people are craving those, uh, that footage. I think we're going to do that. Um, and then all our interviews and everything, it's all up on uh, YouTube.com slash NotSamWrestling. We also uh, have, we have a sick-ass sizzle coming, too. I don't know where I'm going to put the sizzle, but sizzle. good sizzle. People are going to be like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it's for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Suspect Phil, come on to Torre. This week on Jim and Sam's show, we learned that Ian Fidance and his Carmella are broken up. Is this why Prima Volta is no more? No, I mean, Ian's, uh, Ian was actually broken up during the last couple episodes of Prima Volta as well. It's just uh, Ian has been on the road a ton, and B and Ian with Jordan, which should clearly be called Me and Ian. That's the, I mean, of course, that should be the name <laughs> of the show. Um, that thing has exploded. So uh, I'm giving that a little bit of runway, and so is Ian, before we get back to... Uh, do the season five finale and go into season six. At one point, at some point, Prima Volta will be back once things slow down for both of us. I promise you that. Um, Grim Reaper, you season four, Joe takes Europe on two night. February 9th already is the new season of you? Ooh, oh, baby. I can't wait. You know, you is my show. Yeah, which... Uh... Which cancel the actor is going to be on it this time? It they cancel Christy Crystalia on that show. They were like, "Do what you would do," and he was like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> you sure? They were like, "Yeah." They were like, "Oh boy, I think we're going to have to rewrite some of these episodes." <laughs> um, Chris, Netflix is testing facial recognition to sign in and confirmed. It's oh, only fuck you. one user per. Oh, confirm! It's only one user per account. I feel like the move would be. Just make it so that you can't, you can only watch on one screen at a time. If you did that, you would tell your cousin to stop watching Netflix all the time, right? I guess. It'd be a pain. Yeah. It'd be a pain in the ass because then while my kids are watching, I can't watch somewhere else. But it'd be better than having to let Netflix know when I'm going on vacation. Yeah, that, that could be a way to do it. Uh,. P H W O F L O. Uh, congratulations on your first super chat. I'm getting notified this is your very first super chat. So you know what's even better than your first super chat? Super chats are like making love. You always remember your first, but they only get better. You know, they only get better as you go. And sometimes they don't hit. Am I right, hot dog? I don't know what you know. <laughs> <laughs> My super chats always hit. <laughs> always sammy brand muffins have you talked to the man who made you into the man you are today recently scorch was on judge maybelline i keep up with scorch i saw him on judge maybelline i would love to talk to him i think he's mad at me unfortunately <laughs> i don't blame Stop. him yeah i don't blame him it is what it is you know we make our choices in life unfortunately sometimes we're young and immature and uh just going by the seat of our pants and it is what it is uh Ellie Munoz says Rick in the chat wants Rick in the chat wants to know why you banned Brennan. Oh, Kevin Brennan from Jim and Sam. Well, that's because I'm threatened. You know, I don't like having. Uh, he's too. Make, he makes me look obsolete. Let's be honest. We bring somebody in like Kevin Brennan, people go, "Why do we need Sam on Jim and Sam?" And by people, I mean Scott Greenstein, the Sirius XM executive. So I can't have people like that on the show. He goes Jim and Kevin. That's a way better. This sounds much better. And then I come in and I go, what do you guys think? Who's that voice? Oh, disgusting. Um, Antonio de Rosas. Oh, thank you for the contribution. Even though it's in Australian dollars, uh, I'm assuming it translates to something in American. Thank you very much. Uh, keep those super chats coming in. We're acknowledging all of them. Douglas Bouchong. What do you think about Dana White getting Dr. D. David Schultz to do commentary on Power Slap League too soon? I think it's a good idea. I think Dr. D is somewhere watching that going, I should be a part of this thing. Is it just me or is everybody, have you watched any of the Power Slap League? 
Uh, it's right after AEW, so I, I've seen like the first minute or two, but it's not anything I'm interested in. I feel like as you're watching it, you're like, these are the people who I don't know if we can be responsible and give them a whole bunch of prize money. You know, I don't. <laughs> I think they might ruin their lives if they had a whole bunch of money. Yeah, already ruining their lives. You mean by uh, slapping each other in the face at full contact with no protection? Yeah, have you have you wait have you seen by the way like every single drop, their hands are just like, it's like terrible. That. Rolling in the back of their head, hands are twitching. It's it's savagery. It's insane. Yeah, you, you don't see that with UFC or boxers. No, you don't. No, well they protect themselves. They're professionals. Yes, they protect themselves. Uh, not Sam Lehman. Sam, you say every band has the same story, but have you ever heard of Steel Dragon? You know the thing about Steel Dragon is that the singer, the second singer. And the third singer both have similar stories where they grew up with a poster of those guys on their wall, and now they're one of them. Proof that if you want it bad enough and you work hard enough, dreams do come true. I then, was born with this photo of you on my wall. See? I was raised like that. Who else is on that poster, uh, in that picture? Uh-huh. Who else is on the There's picture? someone else there no, no, no. Who else is in the picture with me? Oh, is that is that your girl, Kathy Kelly? I believe that is Kathy Kelly, yes. Oh, boy. I wonder if... Where does she live now? She's she's in La Cali. In Los Angeles? Yeah. Isn't that yeah. where we're doing the live show? Mm-hmm. I wonder if I've talked to her. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you think I... I wonder if I have. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. She was at all the other live events, right? Mm -hmm. And now this one's in her hometown? Yeah. I wonder if I talked to her this week. Hmm. And got approval. Hmm. I wonder if I got approval from... No, never mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Chris Atkinson, thank you so much for the uh, contribution. I really, really appreciate it. Nathan Gerald, don't forget Dear Zachary for a good Valentine's Day documentary. I can't in good faith do that bit on this show. I, I can't. Not Sam Lehman. Kill screen. We have a kill screen coming. Oh, there's a one. You got to find this doc, hot dog. Even if it's on Apple and you got to pay 15 bucks for it or whatever, or Amazon, I don't know. Find mm -hmm. it and watch it over the weekend and talk to me about it. It is such a fun. It's the best. It's it's this guy is like the, a kill screen is when a video game score is so high that the computer hasn't registered it. Like it doesn't go up. That it overloads. High. Right. So you get like a kill screen where it's all glitchy. And I mean, these guys get the biggest boners over these kill screens. It's, you have no idea. <laughs> There's a guy who walks around the arcade alerting everybody to the fact that a kill screen is coming. There's a kill I mean, screen it coming. It's pretty cool when you see one. Just wanted to let you know there's a kill screen coming. Just wanted to let you know we have a kill screen coming over here. <laughs> Just... Like the programmers couldn't fathom that someone would get a score this high. Couldn't what? Fathom. Fat Fathom? Fathom. Fatum, like F A T O M. <laughs> oh, it's better. It's better than plutonic. Are we go? But that's what we're going with. F A T O M. Fatum. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with. I mean, I know how to, I know. I know. I know how you spell it. F A T H O M. But the H is silent. Fat. Fat. Fathom. 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 I'm going with that. Maybe plutonically, <laughs> it's pronounced fatum. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> beef stick. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. All right, they're coming in fast and furious now. Beef stick, Sammy Beans, your meat my mouth got a deal. No deal. No deal. It's not something that appeals to me, and for that reason, I'm out. Super Nintendo Chalmers. <laughs> Super Nintendo Chalmers? <laughs> uh, has Opie burned all bridges with the O&A crew? No, no. He wants to cross that Not Sam bridge. Come to me. Like, I'm Rick James. Come to me. <laughs> nope. For your aura. That's my dog. Uh, Luke Skywanker. That's very creative. Sam Roberts, sponsored by the Walt Disney Company. I do love that Walt Disney Company. They are pretty nice. Pretty sick company. Uh, Beefstick, F. Mary Kill. Any cartel member, a flat earther, or Mae Young. I'm going to put that thing down, flip it, and reverse it. I'm going to throw it over to Hot Dog, except instead what? of Mae Young, I'm going to go Angie. So 
any car f mary kill any cartel member any flat earther and angie uh you know, and you can this start one is actually tough well I mean... you can start with the easiest first if anyone's easier uh let's go with i mean not any not every cartel member is bad some of them are just trying to feed their family you that's know, true just... that's true and and the flat earther i i, I feel like uh they just haven't uh, been exposed to the proper uh, education. Maybe they just have questions. Yes. Right. And Angie has lived a good life. So, so <laughs> I think I think she would appreciate it. You know what? You had a good life. Let's end it right here on a high note. You got married. Congratulations. Let's kill you off right here. Right. I'm going to marry the female cartel member. Smart. Okay. My guy. Okay. Smart. And then I'm gonna fuck the flat earther. Who's a guy? And then female as well. You didn't say female. <laughs> it's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Monkey, you. Uh, I'd rather watch Golden Bum's Golden Radio Voice YouTube show that you played recently than that my radio show that the other bum does. I don't know. I know that <laughs> Golden Voice does a, a YouTube show, but I don't know. My radio, I don't know what my radio show is that the other bomb. Someone said hot dog said it right, by the way. I said fathom. fathom. You fathom. said fathom. You said fathom. Fathom. I can't. It's, I couldn't, it's fathom. I couldn't fathom. fathom. I couldn't fathom. Someone was on my side. They were also wrong. Uh, everybody loves Devin says, I've been listening to old ONA shows. Intern Sam was the best. You were such a little dick. I love it. I've lost a lot of friends because of those years. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> yeah. Did it for the content. Uh, uh, another one from my guy, Super Nintendo Chalmers. I hope we get, just send as many as you want, because I love saying your name. Uh, have you ever played the arcade <laughs> game Ice Cold Beer? Never. ML. Oh, first super chat from ML. Woo! We'll be celebrating first Super Chats from now on, now that YouTube is uh, letting us know when it's the first one. Do you like P.F. Chang's? Would you ever foster a homeless cat? I do like P.F. Chang's. I would not foster a homeless cat unless that cat could speak English. Like, if you could get a cat that could say, I don't know, bagel or muffin or cookie. I would foster a cat that could say the word cookie. And I do like P.F. Chang's. Nathan Gerald. Huh? Now get back to the kitchen. That's right. Nathan Gerald says the plumber was peeking. I don't even know what that means. I don't know. All right. All right, guys. I appreciate you all hanging out on this lonely Friday. Keeping me here till all hours of the evening. Um... I got to get out and see. Uh, there's some there's some movie reviews that I want to do. Um, oh, Beefstick says I want to hear Hot Dog say butt cheeks. Go for it, my man. Ba -ba 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 butt cheeks. Ba -ba -ba. Um, I want to do reviews on the channel for uh, Infinity Pool. Have we seen Infinity Pool? Hot Dog. Okay, got to see that. Cabin in the uh, Knock at the Cabin, and uh, one other one, Skin of a Rink or something like that. There's a lot of, uh, there's some movie reviews that I want to do for the channel. And, okay, I'm looking into bringing back a uh, uh, full franchise review, but maybe doing it as an additional show. Not necessarily doing it as a Sam Roberts now, but putting it up as its own uh, video. So if you've got, I'm thinking either Paranormal Activity or Final Destination. If you've got a preference or another franchise altogether, hit me up. Let your boy know. We'll see you next week. You got five styluses. You might as well use them. I'm going to cheers with you later. <laughs>